Hey guys, it's Lisa, and welcome to my channel. I'm sorry it's been so long again, and and I'm also sorry to say it's probably just going to be maybe one video a week uh, for a little while until I can get over this whatever it is. And I know that a lot of people that I'm close to have dealt with having this. Uh, I'm just one of those people, I guess, that it's just lingering with. And although I do feel good, uh, my brain fog um, has caused me to uh, struggle to get to stay on task. So um, it's just is what it is. I'm just going to have to deal with it. Uh, but the mood that I had with all this, uh, I started taking B12 um, at the request of my pharmacist and seems like that is really, really helping my mood. I've been in a really good mood, but it just, um, uh, this chest congestion, I, I don't, I think I kicked it during the day and then at night it comes back. So, um, but again, I feel really good. So, uh, I've been working, um, and then my husband's business, this is his peak season. So, it's kept me really busy, too. So, again, I'm sorry that there's going to be fewer videos. But I'm starting with this wall pocket. And I think I did this at one time on video. Uh, but this is one that um, either I didn't clear coat. I thought that I did because of the kind of wood that it was. Uh, but it bled. So, um, it didn't sell. And actually, once I saw that it was bleeding, I put it away and... Um, just kind of decided to go back to it at another time. Now, I'm going to use the color celery on this, and um, it is a Waverly color. And I know you guys are used to me using Dixie Belle, but my friend cleaned out a lot of her craft supplies, and I bought some of her items from her, and she had a lot of Waverly paint. So I really do like the celery color, and before I started using Dixie Belle, I, I used um, this color a lot. So I'm going to put two coats of this color over this. Um, now I will say that this time um, I made sure to give it a couple of coats of a clear coat so that I didn't have to worry about any bleeding on this. Now these two large pictures are my inspiration for today's vignette. And I bought these at auction. I got them both for $5 plus buyer's premium, premium and all that. But uh, I got a really good deal on these. And they're in really good shape. I don't see the need to do anything to them. And uh, I love those colors that I can pull out for this vignette. I hope that you guys had a wonderful Easter service yesterday. And uh, a, a wonderful time with your family. Um, I hope that you took the time to reflect on the incredible gift that we celebrate this Easter. When I allow myself to really reflect on his mercy and his love and his goodness and how completely undeserving I am, it is just overwhelming to me and I feel so blessed uh, to be a part of that. So once I get two coats on this and let it dry well, then I'm going to take uh, some gold gilding wax from Dixie Belle and rub over all those little high spots. Uh, you can see where I did that the last time, but again, I got so much bleeding on this that it just kind of took away from the look. And I like to apply the gilding wax most of the time with my finger uh, because you could put that on with a brush. But I like the look of, um, of just having it on there very scarcely so that it looks like um, it has worn off over time. I just think that's a, a much better look, or for me it is. So I'm going to go over, just kind of trim this out where I feel like it could use it. And uh, gilding wax, if you've never used it, is very, very easy uh, to use. And one tiny can of it goes a long, long way.
Now, once my gilding wax had dried, I took it outside and sprayed it with a clear coat and let that dry well because I'm going to be adding some uh, Van Dyke Brown Glaze to this. Although I love, love the color, it um, I need it to be warmed up to go with that picture. So this color, as pretty as it is, I think it's even prettier once you warm it up. So I just, I'm, I, again, I've already put some uh, clear, clear um, top coat on this. And then I'm going through with the brush and just kind of working it into the design and then wiping off all the excess that I can. And uh, you can do this without clear coating it first. But if you do, you're going to change your color more than I want to. And here's what it looked like finished. And I put some flowers in it that kind of mimic uh, the flowers that are in the pictures. Now the next item that I want to make over, and I forgot to get a picture of this one first. Uh, but this is an old lamp that I have base coated in the color Gravel Road. And I forgot to show the... the um, shade that went with it also but it's one that I had um, worked on probably in a video at some point I'm not sure about that but it's definitely one that I had made over at some point and I didn't really um, I used the um, lamp in my bedroom and I didn't really need it in there anymore and the color that was on it uh, it's just not something that I felt like uh, I was never happy with how it looked with the shade So I'm gonna paint this in the color buttercream. I'm gonna give it a couple of coats and Then once I let that dry well, then I'm just gonna take um, a damp cloth and just kind of wet distress it in places uh, because anytime that you paint an item that uh, is very old uh, you risk taking away from that old crusty look and so I'm just kind of being really careful to make sure and get it old and crusty looking again so uh, I don't want rust on it but what I want to do is again I'll give this two coats of the color butter cream and I'll let that dry well and then I will uh, use a damp cloth and wet distress it before it dries, I like to do that before it dries too well, because if it dries too well, you just have to use a lot more effort on this. So, and the bottom coat, it's always a good idea to spray paint the bottom coat so that it's a stronger finish and you can wipe that chalk paint off, but not worry about wiping your uh, paint off. But this one, I just used a chalk paint on it. So I wanted to make sure on this one, I let that top coat dry overnight, or the bottom coat dry overnight. But then I'm just going to have to make sure and do my wet distress just as soon as it dries well enough to do that. So again, I put two coats on this and let it dry well. And then I take a damp cloth and remove some of the paint, leaving some of the dark showing through and then I finish that off with a clear coat because I'm also going to use the Van Dyke Brown Glaze on this and I didn't want to change up this color too much so um, again I'm going to put a clear coat on this after I get it painted and distressed and then I'll use the brown glaze on it. Now, because I didn't clear coat after I painted this, 
and I just did my distressing uh, because this Van Dyke Brown Glaze is a liquid. Um, if you're not careful, you'll pull some of your paint off. And generally what I would do would be to go ahead and clear coat it before I do this so that that didn't happen. But in this case, I want it to happen. So uh, what I didn't take off by using a damp cloth, which I didn't show, uh, it will take some more off when I rub hard over this glaze. And that just gives it a more authentic look to the distressing. And I'm also going to use the same process on this candlestick. And I already have a dark color on this one, or it already had a dark color on it. So I'm just going to paint it with two coats of the buttercream and uh, let that dry. And then do uh, my wet distress with a damp cloth and then go over it with a clear coat and, and then the brown glaze. So again, the same process on this one, except that I skipped the first step of painting it a dark color.
And I love the crackle finish that is already on this one, especially here on the top. Uh, so I'm going to get a lot of those cracks. And then when I go to use my brown glaze, uh, that will kind of hang out down in those cracks and uh, just give this a much better look. Now here is the lamp show shade that I had made over and I just all I did on this one was tear some strips of fabric and cut some strips strips from a lace curtain panel and just kind of stretch them from the top to the bottom and tie them off on both the top and the bottom. So that's all I had to do to co to cover this lamp shade. Then here are both of them together and kind of gave them the same finish. And now I'm going to make over, I have some of these uh, risers and I love the finish on these except that uh, it's blue underneath and they just haven't been a very good seller for me. These are not old. They, I buy them at a place where they make antique replicas, uh, but um, the blue, I guess, has held them back. So what I'm going to do uh, on this one to make it go with this little vignette is paint this in the same color of green, the celery from um, Waverly. And uh, Waverly paint can be bought at Walmart. Uh, they carry it. So or on Amazon. It's very easy to find. So I'm going to give this two coats of this, and then I'm going to take it outside and well first i'm going to wet distress it after i put two coats on this and then i'm going to take it outside and um, spray it with a clear top coat and then i'll finish it off with a van dyke brown glaze now i'm not going to get a whole lot of distress on this because it has the lighter color underneath but it ends up being just enough now the last item that i'm going to make over is this little clock and i knew i wanted to take those hands off and uh, recover the back behind that and then put the hands back on. And um, it didn't have batteries in it, so I thought it would be as simple as putting the battery in it and it working. But I should have, I should have checked it before I did this. Uh, it actually doesn't work. So I end up just turning this into a little framed piece of art. But for the frame, I'm going to... Uh, paint it in the same color of buttercream and I'm going to use that same finish that I did on both the lamp and the um, candlestick and I'm going to paint it with two coats of the color buttercream and then I'm going to wet distress down to this darker color and then uh, then spray it with a top coat and then finish it off with the Van Dyke brown glaze and then I'll glue some um, scrapbook paper on the clock face and, and then I'm going to make a little shabby rose and glue it in the center. And for this fabric, you can use any kind of fabric that you want. But uh, when I want to make a little bit more substantial rose, then uh, I cut strips from some quilt batting. And this is the Warm and Natural Quilt Batting. And you can coffee stain it or leave it natural. I think this one was just left natural. And... Um, and so I just like to um, cut strips from that and then make my rose with it. And if you've never done this before, you just take a strip of any fabric, 
tie a knot in the end, glue the knot to the center where you want your rose, and then just twist and wrap and just add a little dot of glue here and there. Every now and then you can change directions that you're twisting. You're stu still keeping your rose going in the same direction, obviously, but you may twist it backwards or forwards just to add a little bit different dimension. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.